We have two different types of mini split systems in our house. The four upstairs bedrooms have ductless systems with four different air handling head units, each with their own remote control, each servicing its own zone, and all powered by a shared condensing unit or heat pump located outside. Now the downstairs is the same thing only different. It's all one zone. It has one wall mounted thermostat and it has one air handler located in the crawl space. Now that air, that air handler is powered by a single dedicated condensing unit out back and then it's ducted throughout the downstairs with flex duct and floor registers. Now as you know I'm a carpenter not a mechanical guy. But as I watch the mechanical trades work, and as I've been watching them for years, and by mechanical trades I mean plumbing, electrical, and especially HVAC, I think I have noticed that having all of your tools and supplies close at hand may be the single biggest productivity booster that you can set up for yourself if you are in this business. The second biggest productivity booster, at least in what these guys are doing today, lies in not damaging any of the finished surfaces that you're in contact with and that you're cleaning up after yourself when you're done. These young men were excellent at both of these. And this sort of behavior and attention to detail will set a guy apart. This interior unit, or head as it's called, is a floor mount model and it will be controlling the temperature in our bonus room. Now we have wall mount units in each of the other bedrooms, each in their own zone and independently controlled with their own remote control. This is a big part of why ductless mini split systems are more efficient. It's not a one size fits all solution to temperature in the different spaces in a house. Another big reason that these ductless mini split systems are growing in popularity is you do not have to set aside big spaces, either in soffits or in crawl spaces, usually, or in attics, or you don't have to build space for ducts to carry air through your house. Now that saves money and it simplifies structural design. There's nothing worse than finding out when it's way too late that a beam that has to be in one particular spot makes it impossible to get your air conditioned air into a space because the duct can't go through the space that is committed to the beam. With a mini split system you are running a line set from the condensing unit into the head. It takes about a three inch diameter space and that is not much trickier than running an electrical line. Mini split systems are really growing in popularity around here for several reasons, but I think primarily because you can get better efficiency for less money. Efficiency in HVAC systems is most often measured, at least in the cooling cycle, with a SEER rating. SEER stands for Seasonal Energy Efficiency Ratio, and it can be thought of as average efficiency over the cooling season. Now on the heating side of the equation efficiency is called HSPF and that stands for Heating Seasonal Performance Factor. Our systems are really efficient with SEER ratings around 18.6 and HSPF ratings around 12.2. These numbers mean that our system far exceeds code requirements and it will cost much, much less money over time to keep this house comfortable. Now if you live in a really cold climate, ours is not, but yours might be. You might be surprised to learn that ductless technology means that there are systems available, systems on the market that maintain 100% capacity 
even when outside temperatures dip as low as 13 degrees below zero. Now if you've noticed that the bedrooms upstairs are well climate controlled, but the hallway, the head of the stairs, and the bathrooms don't have any dedicated source, you're right. The load calculations showed that the common areas will be served plenty well by the head units that are located in all of the bedrooms. When you're living with a ductless system like this, you may have to remember to keep some doors ajar during the day. But I can tell you that at this point, this system has been working through the last part of a hot summer and the first part of a cool fall, and the average air temperature everywhere is nicely balanced, very livable, and I don't think there's anything to worry about in terms of distributing the comfortable air all through the structure. Well, we're finally getting down towards the end of our series, but we have a handful of videos left. We have low voltage final installation. We have plumbing trim out, including an instant hot water heater. We have a couple of blacksmithing videos, forging a custom stair railing, making a copper range hood and installing appliances. So there's some more information headed your way. I have to say that I appreciate your endurance having stuck with us this long and I hope you'll stick with us right to the end. Thank you for watching Essential Craftsman. Keep up the good work. Oh, that's really cool. Look at that.